This class is concerned with portfolio building. Now we start by looking at what a portfolio is. It's a collection of your achievements, skills, experiences, and it's often presented in a, a binder or in a, a folder. Progressively, nowadays, it's presented electronically. The documents that would have gone into the folder may be scanned and stored electronically. But the idea is the same. It's a collection of documents that shows your achievements, your skills and your experiences. And it provides an opportunity for students to showcase their achievements and experience. It's also a great tool to market yourself in the job market. Uh, market yourself to colleges and to universities as well. Um, it's, it's a way of presenting an overall picture of yourself. It's more than a CV because it contains evidence. It contains scanned documents, images, pictures, even a video. So it's much more than just a, a, a sterile piece of paper. Now the importance of a portfolio, well it's keeping and maintaining a portfolio allows an individual to develop skills such as writing, reading, researching, etc. Because the, the portfolio requires this. It requires careful editing. The material is not just put together, it's put together in a logical fashion and it's, it, it enables the reader, the person consulting the portfolio, to negotiate their way through the portfolio in a meaningful fashion. It enables you to be more in touch with your creative side and allows you to explore possibilities. CVs are strict documents, normally quite short documents showing your development academically and experientially through jobs and also discusses your hobbies and some aspect of your, your personal development. But um, a portfolio can be much more creative as I said earlier, it can contain samples of your work or it could contain a, a video which shows uh, examples of your work. So it's, it's a much more creative uh, undertaking. It's important to, to stand out from the crowd, be unique and increase your chances of employability in that way. Uh, standing out from the crowd means having materials uh, which show your experiences and show your achievements in a creative fashion. It shows you as a desirable worker, someone that the employer would want to have as a part of their workforce. But it enables you also to self-discover and to develop your own confidence. Um, going through the development of a portfolio enables you to spot weaknesses in uh, your own development and enables you to put into place plans to fill that gap. But it also gives you an opportunity to see what you have done and you can develop confidence based on what you have achieved. Show your achievements and bring all your achievements to one folder uh, which is easy to access. So uh, you are summarized almost in one folder but it shows the best of you. It shows what you've achieved, your skills, your abilities, your competencies uh, and it shows them, it shows you to be a creative person. Now the types of portfolio, well there's the graduate student portfolio which is ideal for academic use. This contains lots of information about your academic development, not just your qualifications and your past certificates, but perhaps presentations you've done uh, whilst at college or university, um, good pieces of work you've, uh, you've developed, 
perhaps a, a thesis or a dissertation that you've developed. So it it shows uh, your development. And also we've got the project portfolio, which is academic and professional use, provides evidence for project work. Sometimes um, we work on projects, not necessarily academic, they may have an academic component, but we're working on a project to explore some perhaps work situation, whether um, the introduction of a new product is a good idea, whether it will enhance the, the product range or, or how it will be received by the customers. And this is a, an opportunity for you to show how you went about this particular project, this particular piece of analysis. Um, it will have some academic parts in and it will have some professional use because it shows how you structured the work and how you went about it. A professional portfolio provides an opportunity to show off your skills and achievements. Uh, there is heavy emphasis in the professional portfolio on your skills and your achievements. It shows what you can do, um, it shows the, the competence that you've got in each of the skills and it shows the big achievements that you've had over the years and documents the achievements and showcases them. An online portfolio well, it's easy to access and ideal for professional and academic use. There are several types here. The, um, the one that I mentioned here, Pebblepad, is one that is uh, often talked about. But um, if you go online and type in ePortfolio, you'll see that you can join many of these um, portfolio sites and save your work there if you wish. Uh, many of them are free, but in addition to which, of course, we supply Mahara, which is one of the main academic uh, e-portfolio sites, and um, you have access to that by virtue of your attendance on this course. Um, the personal portfolio, well, that's ideal for self-discovery. Uh, an opportunity for you to be creative and freely express yourself. It's it's a personal portfolio. It looks at uh, your aims, objectives, your ambitions, your skills, your achievements, and it, it perhaps not just aimed at work, but it might be aimed at uh, your hobbies and your interests. So it's much wider. So there's a whole variety of portfolio types that we may consider. Now the portfolio content, well, there's no right and wrong way of producing a portfolio. It should consist of evidence that you are um, comfortable in sharing with others. So it's, it shouldn't be too personal. And remembering that it is uh, information that you are circulating, you must be sure of the people you're circulating it to you must be able to control the people you're circulating it to because you don't want it to uh, uh, to be used for uh, the wrong purposes, perhaps to steal your identity or something of that nature. So it's, it's important to be aware of the restrictions that you should place on the portfolio yourself. You should not uh, include a lot of detailed personal information information that, as I said, could be used for the wrong purposes later. Um, you may include things like letters of reference. Uh, these will not hurt, generally speaking, hurt many people. Um, a letter of reference, uh, providing the letter of reference sticks rigidly to uh, the professional issues, and they are professional letters of ref uh, reference then there should be no issue. The, your CV, your curriculum vitae, again, um, generally speaking, there's not much risk in that. Um, the only personal information will be your telephone number, your email address, and perhaps your home address. But for the sake of the, the portfolio content, you can always edit those out. Um, there's no need 
to have them there. If someone is interested in you having looked at the portfolio, then uh, a much more detailed um, uh, set of documents could be circulated to that person, could be given to that person, which would include your email address and your telephone number and home address and, and so on. It may include transcripts, um, transcripts of your performance on the course, how you performed overall in the modules and uh, whether you scored merits or distinctions or passes or or whatever. So it, it may include transcripts. And these are all um, useful in building up the portfolio. The transcript is an academic record or any evidence of your achievements. For example, qualification certificates and other certificates of achievement. But also it could be just simply a printout of your performance up to a particular point in time on a particular course. So for example on the H&D uh, a transcript would be showing your current position in your studies and what's left to be done and how well you've done in the uh, assessments you've taken so far. Uh, the portfolio could also contain samples of your work and pictures and reports. Uh, that is, these are quite ex quite acceptable as well. And also evidence of skills achieved. So it's not just good enough to say you've got good communication skills, but how good? How good are your communication skills? And and what evidence can you offer to say that you you've got the the skills that you say you have? How can you prove that? Well, it may be you've done some public talking or you have um, you are the chairperson of a particular committee or there may be some evidence that you're able to offer um, so it's it's important to be able to look at the skills that you say you have talk about the the level of competency you've got in those skills and offer some evidence to support your contention Now the portfolio layout, well, a student, professional and project portfolio must always look professional and effectively reflect your achievements. So it's important that the portfolio does the job and is specific. It, it, it should just do what it sets out to do. Um, it is wrong to clutter portfolio with irrelevant information or information which is not central to what you're, you're trying to do. So ensure that it's, uh, it contains evidence of what you want to bring to bear and what you want others to see about you. So don't just clutter it up with anything you've got. Be selective. Only give uh, or make available in the portfolio what you want others to see about you. It should be easy to access the portfolio. Um, if you've got one online then make sure you've got the address and be able to give the address to to uh, people. Um, give the hyperlink so that they're able to press on the hyperlink and it'll go straight to it. If it's hard copy make sure that uh, you can disseminate it, you can pass it out to them and perhaps collect it at the end when, when they're finished with it you can take it back um, it's not wise to just leave it with people um, it depends on how personal the information is or, or how detailed the information is but generally speaking get it back but the portfolio must be up to date that's very important um, you're constantly evolving and constantly learning and your skills are constantly improving so keep the portfolio up to date. If specific and provides accurate information which is supported by your CV. So if, if there is specific information in there in, in the portfolio, specific information about certain skills or, or certain achievements, 
make sure it's also reflected in your CV. Make sure that it's cross-referenced with your CV. And make sure there is evidence. So specific claims, claims about your achievements, should be supported. And they should also appear in your CV because they're, they're significant, perhaps, um, achievements. And they should, should get a mention there. The layout, however, should be simple and appropriate for its purpose. For example, you should, it should have a, a title page in the portfolio and a contents page showing what's included in the portfolio. Uh, a career development plan, or if you like, a, a personal statement, which is not personal, by the way. It's a statement of what you want to achieve, uh, the time frame in which you want to achieve that and some indication of your plan as to how to achieve it. Um, your CV and evidence of education and training. Um, transcript for example of how well you're doing on the course. or um, But make sure that of course the evidence that you're offering is for a start make sure it's absolutely honest but but secondly you have an opportunity if you're not doing too well in certain modules perhaps not to include the transcript as to what you include in the portfolio it's up to you so you must be honest uh, if the transcript has weak sections then you must be honest about those as well if you choose to include the transcript you may not wish to have any evidence of skills achieved and awards make sure that you're able to back up what you're claiming if you claim particular competencies make sure you can prove that you've got those don't just say it and include work, work samples and research proposals show what you the quality of your work and the, uh, the skills that your work illustrates it could be your written skills, your communication skills by including videos, for example, or it could be practical skills, something that you've made, but you want to include, so you can include pictures or images of that or drawings, or again, you can include a video of it, but it includes that. Now the benefits of maintaining um, a portfolio. Well, it helps the student to develop creative and critical thinking skills. Uh, here's an opportunity for you to showcase what you're like, to project yourself, to include the documents that you think are important, and to be somewhat more relaxed because you're able to use hyperlinks, let's say if it's electronic, you're able to um, include images, drawings, videos, sounds, you're able to use the full range of technicalities that are available electronically. It, it also a benefit is it, it enables you to self-reflect and evaluate future development needs. Once you've got the portfolio developed, you're able to think about yourself, think about that's you, that is what you've done to date, that is your portfolio. And in, in quieter moments when you can reflect on this, you can think, uh, where is it short, where could it be strengthened, what can I do, am I on the right course, am I the right direction, I mean, not, not the right course, but am I in the right direction? Am I aiming at the right career? Am I uh, aiming to go about my development correctly? Uh, what do I need to do? What sort of person am I? What skills have I got? Uh, what sort of career do I want? And so on. So it enables you to self-reflect. And that's important. We should get to know ourselves and to get to know what it is that we want and how to achieve it. Certainly portfolios are helpful when preparing for interviews because we have prepared all our documents in one place 
uh, we have an interview coming up. We we know our generic material. We know our overall material because it's in the portfolio. The only thing we need to prepare in the context of the interview is detailed knowledge of the organization which you'll have to research. You have to know about the organization, you have to know about the product, you have to know about the history of the organization, the number of branches it's got, where it's located, where it was founded and so on. So you, you have to do some research into the organization who is going to interview you. But the portfolio will help you with yourself. It will help you to organize your own presentation about yourself. And that's some of the work has been done for you. You've done it over a period of time and that takes off some of the pressure. Keeping a portfolio is beneficial as it allows interviewers to get to know candidates in a short period of time. So passing out a, a portfolio to the people who are going to interview you shows that you are very open, very honest and you are laying yourself open for comment, criticism and questioning and that shows confidence. So you are taking a, a strong positive move about yourself and the interviewers should respect that. So portfolios are beneficial in that context as well. Being called for an interview you may want to submit the portfolio in advance so that those interviewing you uh, know you. They know what's in your portfolio and that means that the interview may focus on uh, your knowledge of the organization uh, and on aspects of your likely uh, employment, what you will be doing and your skills and how you're aiming to develop your skills in that context. So that is portfolio building. It's yet another tool in uh, the uh, in the bid to to get uh, the type of employment, the type of career that you desire. So it's it's important. It goes with the CV and it goes with interview techniques and so on. But it's it's another important important uh, part of being prepared for. Um, for interview and for your own career development. So it's an important set of documents all in one place and this video has talked about the benefits of that and what documents should be included and what it is. And that's all I'm going to do in this session so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for watching.